that are on there truly are the, the things that everybody pulled. You know, as scrubs, we have more knowledge than the folks that, that pulled things downstairs. So although it said um, three gowns, they may not have noticed that we needed a gown for Dr. Nell, and he weighs close to 400 pounds. So we need a big boy gown for him. So chuck this one over in the corner and go ahead and make a note that you need to get a big boy gown for him. Things like that. That's kind of our inside knowledge that we want to be sure is reflected when we do a case. Um, after we bring this all in, we check our preference card. Um, on the preference card, somebody has that pulled it yesterday has checked each item off as they pulled it. If they did not find a certain item, they will say still need or not found or circle it. There'll be some way that you know that instead of um, three pair of gloves, they only found two pair of gloves that he wanted. So you'll know that you need to still um, acquire some, some supplies. Um, hopefully it was you that pulled your case. So somebody may have come and checked it during the night and added that to you, added that to that card and they would have marked it off. When you pull a case, you always initial the page. You're always responsible for the work that you do, okay, by initialing. All right, so we, we're sure that all these supplies are on the cart. As you pull them out of there, you put them where they needed to go. You check the sterility and integrity of every package as you took it off, as you took it out of here, okay? Um, even your gloves that you pulled when you came from the supply room or um, wherever you procured your gloves, you checked them before you got them ready. Um, after you have arranged the furniture in your room, obviously you're at least um, 12 to 18 inches from the wall, space in between, space in between, and 12 to 18 inches here. We're pretending that there's a wall where you guys are standing, okay? Um, then you're ready to um, check with your circulator. So now it's like mm, 7:10, and circulator's not been back in, um, but uh, you've got your stuff all laid out. So she shows up, and you say, "Are we good to go?" She says, "Yeah, go ahead and oh, we can go ahead and open." Are we good to go? We're good. All right. And open. We can open, and I'll go check the patient. I'll be right back. So you know that the circulator's rounded off the supplies that you need. Um, you've had a minute to go through your stuff, get anything extra um, that you need, and you're going to pick up your items and you're going to pick them up and put them down one time. Um, don't pick them up, put them on the bed, take them off the bed, put them where they go. Save yourself those steps. You're using, you're going to wear your, your little puppy dogs out in the course of the day if you um, double your work by um, putting stuff out and then rearranging. Now sometimes. There's more equipment than what you have space for here on this back table and these mayos and these ring stands, and you have to use the bed. Um, but everything needs to be at a level that you can work with. Notice how she has her tray down low, um, her, all, all her supplies here. I wouldn't open an instrument tray up here. What would I be doing if I reached in here? I'd be out of my box, wouldn't I, so, um, once I get uh, scrubbed in. Checking her sterility and integrity. So it's the same thing every time. Back table, basin, instruments, and right here she's going to place, place her gown. We like you guys to gown and glove off of a mayo stand because um, you have less potential to contaminate all the money that's on this table right here, okay? If you touch anything on this field, you've wasted all that money has to be replaced. If you do it here, all you've wasted is a gown and a pair of gloves. Prendo? Mm -hmm. Can you help me open this? Now, Ms. Eason's ready to open her back table. You know, we use that back table word as a lot of um, expression. Can you throw it on my back table? What's my back table? Where's my back table? Notice how she checks every wrapper that's individually wrapped. When she um, opened a big pack, like the whole big uh, supply pack that comes, she will check that and then she doesn't have to check anything on the inside. She gets her circulator to help her open her back table okay. cover. Mm -hmm. And once it's where it is, even though it may not be primo, it stays there. We're not going to shift that in any way. Now she's keeping her um, uh, her back table in view all the time. She's not turning her back. She's starting to get her supplies out and open them. Notice that this is where our door is. So this is the corner that's closest to the door, and that's where we want to put um, paper supplies in the surgeon's gown. So when they come 
enter the room, all those supplies will be ready for him um, closest to the door. In other words, we don't want him to have to walk. It's not just a matter of have to. There's more uh, potential that he's going to contaminate if he starts to walk around. So we want him. We want to get him and get him dressed before we get it. He gets in trouble. And it's going to happen right there. Checking our wrapper. Doesn't have to check the wrapper inside the plastic dust cover coming from the company. Just the ones that are privately wrapped. Which ones are we checking? Those those exactly. The ones that got wrapped in RS in case there's a hole in it. She's looking for a hole. Notice that she stay, keeps her distance from the oh, oh, Tim, may I drop that? from Can her you field. One, please? Not gonna use that one, are we? One on the floor. Is that a sharp? Yes. What needs to be done with that sharp? Exactly. Can she stick it in her pocket and in the course of the day? Um, no. get around to stick it into the well sure, it's protected. It has a it's inside the package. There's, there's no way she can stick herself with that. Um, I'm not going to waste my time running around finding a sharps container, although they should be conveniently located. It, it may not be um, true. So she's got her supplies ready. I would continue opening stuff while it's in her out. I purposely dropped that one so you guys could see that I'm not going to leave my field. I sent her out. Sorry. Like, ma'am, can you? The integrity is still open. So when those new things come in, you still need to check on them. Um, that was one of the things that came from uh, another place and, and uh, you hadn't had a chance to look at it. Somebody else may have looked at it on the way to bring it to you, but they didn't know that. Notice how Ms. Eason pulls that next item to be opened out away from her back table so she's got a good margin of, of a buffer around it and not contaminate her back table. Now that makes that all sterile and it can actually come a little closer to her back table because it's also a sterile item. So she's starting in the center and working laterally, isn't she? Okay. Now she's going to open her packet, her uh, instrument pack, straight up, step back, and what's she going to check in there? Filter. Exactly. So what's she looking for? Holes, water marks, wet. Holes, bugs, water, whatever. What else is she looking for? Internal indicator. Internet. Indicator, exactly. So the last thing she's going to open is her own are her own supplies. She's already checked these. She doesn't have to mess with them anymore. She's got them checked out. Sets her gown in the middle of the tray. Opens, um, peeling away from herself every time. And straight on down and that be that becomes her sterile field now it may not be organized the way that she wants it to be but she can't move it once it gets there okay once your once your surface is settled you can't rearrange it now she has an option she can open the first pair of gloves that she's going to open on the back on the mayo stand and she can open the second pair on the mayo stand but she'll be sterile dressed sterile with her with her first pair of gloves and she has the option to open the second pair on this um, table over here. You got a much bigger, much bigger target on that package over on that table over there. What do you want to get? I don't care. Your choice, madam. Peel and pop right on over. Tim, will you watch my fill? Sure. So you can see how important it is to make sure that your trash can is readily available. Don't take care of trash and walk all the way over to the corner to put it in the trash can. Pull that trash can up where it's um, convenient for you to locate it. Any questions so far? <laughs> Ms. Easton walks in, she reaches over so that she's not dripping anything on her field. <coughs> dries her hands using one half of the towel and then flip into the other end of the towel. She got cooties off of that other elbow, right? Mm -hmm. So she needs to use the other end of the towel so that she doesn't rub all those cooties on her clean hand. Notice how she keeps her fingers protected as she's going around. Now, she doesn't switch hands with that towel. The hand that ends up with is the, is the one that she um, ends up putting in the trash. 
She grabs her gown, watches her hand go out to each elbow, I mean, out to each cuff. And she doesn't go through the cuff. <laughs> intentionally, <laughs> intentionally Ms. doesn't go Ms. through the cuff. Miss Morgan's hands are a little aggressive this morning. <laughs> All right, so what would you do if that happened? When in doubt. What Just pull it back in? And no. Throw, you throw it out. Throw it out. Got throw it. it out. Notice how Miss Eason's keeping her tummy. She's got her distance away from her mayo stand. Now, her problem areas are right here, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. there's nothing covering that right there. So notice how she's kind of working over a surface. Okay. Um, I switched my gloves. Okay. But she's sterile now. She's touching a sterile item and she's touching a sterile field. So she's going to make sure that the front of her gown, she pulled this down right here, didn't she? When she opened this. So her, her finger cooties are here. She can't be near that. She can't be, she has to keep a distance from there. Um, she grabbed, picked up her glove and stepped back to put it on, which is the technique that we'd like to see you do rather than stay in there. Um, which is going to add more problems for you. And what you saw, it seemed real simple, but that was what we were talking about. If you make an error, how to fix it, and you can move on. You didn't contaminate it. Nothing was contaminated. So she just got slid over, got her the right glove, and made that. And now, there's people moving around in this room the whole time that you're doing all this, guys. So. You have to keep your um, fields that all of these things in view to avoid uh, the potential that somebody else has. That grabs her, her uh, wrappers in the middle and um, hands it with her right hand and um, the circulator will walk around you. Don't be tempted to um, turn your back to your field to get them to tie you, okay? Just hand it the right hand and then um, with your tab and then tie your gown up. Now, Miss Easton's sterile. She's now working on a sterile field. So she, um, the only thing she's going to touch, remember the 12 principles, sterile people touch only sterile items. That's when this rule comes into play. Okay, I'll have to start. I'm going to interrupt it. Just so close your eyes. Everybody close, close your eyes. Your eyes. <laughs> turn your back. Close your eyes. Turn your, turn your thing off. <laughs> this is what we do for you. When you go out to scrub your hands, we will add these items to your field. Instead of having you open all this, we'd be here all day long. So we just have you add. We add these things. They're sterile. Now, Ms. Easton has everything um, on her field that she needs to start this operation. She has the towels that she needs. She picked up a couple extra blades. And notice over here in her setup or in her basin, she's got her sharps container. But her number one concern right now is to do what? Cow. Exactly. So she's preparing her back table. We lay down a towel so that we provide an extra barrier for like scissors or um, hemostats, whatever does it, that they don't poke through the back table. Something most hospitals ask you to do that. Mm -hmm. It's a team effort here. Your circuit is going to have to check that um, check that team for you. You can't you can't do it without that happening. <clears throat> She's pulling everything out at one time. Our goal here is to not drop things on the floor, but to make as few movements as we possibly can. She's already got a plan in her mind. She knows her doctor's going to walk in from the door. So she wants her paper, her paper products with his gown and gloves to be down there in that end. She's um, designing the staples so that all her counterpoints are going to be right here on this end. She's got her instruments out. She's handing off her count sheet so that the circulator will be... Um, ready to count with her and she's even while she's handed it off she's thinking about um, what it is that she's going to do next so our, our paper products are on one side our sharps and countable items are all on the other side obviously your bobie wouldn't be screwed up like that you know every new bobie would be down in the in the holster Notice how Miss Easton is standing up relatively straight. She's not leaning over her field to see what's going on. 
Okay, why is this, <laughs> what's the difference in standing up straight and doing that? What's going to be falling off of her in microscopic amounts? Cooties. Cooties, exactly. Dander. Um, um, if you guys don't, you know, the people that don't shave, there's, you know, hairs that could potentially fall off. Even dressed uh, with a hat on, there's potentially hairs that could come, you know, fall off of, you know, off of around. So if we can keep that, if we can make help you to stand up straight. I know a lot of you write like this and work like this. I've seen you do it. So we'll help you to remember to stand up straight um, because it's really a very important part. First of all, for your own ergonomics, it's important for you guys to stand up straight. But even more importantly, for the health and welfare of your patient, you need to not lean over your field. And they're ready to count. Laps one, two. What's the order in which she's going to count, guys? Three, four, five. 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 Yep, SSI. Keep that, just tattoo that on your eyelids. That one's a for sure thing, okay? Right that. <clears throat> Now, notice how she's um, laying those Two. out so that Ms. Morganson Three. see the blue Four. line. We Five. have to be able to see the blue line Six. when we're counting to Seven. know that it's a ray tech Eight. and not a, have somehow Nine. a four before. Okay? If I'm sure I have ten of these at the beginning, I'm sure I'm going to have to have ten at the end. Great. I have one, two, three, and four. Suture. I'll start with my big pack first. One, so she has two, a multi three, pack, four, five, and six, that's what she's seven, going to start eight, to count with. Plus one is nine. If she has um, sharp, if she has needle packages open, and some of them are cutting needles, which it says right on the box, she's going to separate those. So her cutting is in a separate pile because that's going to be her skin stitch um, from her um, other from her round needles. She's taking just a second so Ms. Morgan can see those things without having to lean over her field. Notice how she's at least 12 to 18 inches away. That's where you want your circulator to be. And bobby tip. Thank you. Sure. If you forget, they'll remind you. No hypos on the field? No <coughs> hypos. All right. I've got syringes, so I may need one later. Right. Hemostats. I have one, two, three, four, she five, left her six, in. seven, and eight. She didn't remove the stringer. Kelly's one, two, stay three, four, five, six. Alice, one, two, three, and four. Babcock, one, two, Notice three, and four. Notice how the instrument name I've got Copers, one, two, three, and, and then four. counts the number. Tonsils, that one, way, two. That way, that circulator who's right looking angle. at that list one, makes sure that Spice she's stick. counting one, on that two. item as needle the other one is. Needle handles, needle holders, one, two, three, and four. Scissors, one, two, three, and four. Two uh, Lego clip pliers. Oh, scissors. Let me do that again. One, two, three, and four. Five and six. So your little plastic caps and can go right back down in the pan, guys. I've got um, pickups. One, two, three, four, and five. I've got one suction with tip. I've got one, two, three, four, five, and six towel clamps. You don't have to take them apart. I've got a wheat ladder. Clip together. No special order after you get your stringer done. Just count two your stringer first. Two ribbon stick. And knife handles. One and two. Extra I don't have anything extra. Thank you. So this surgeon maybe prefers a particular set pair of scissors, whatever. We would have opened those at the beginning of the case. Now it's the time to tell her that you have those. So she'll write it down individually on the feet, on the uh, on the count sheet, and then you'll have you'll have to come up with those at the, at the end. She's draping her nail. There's a whole science to that. Don't worry about it, Miss Easy. You need some ties. I've got ties. Okay. <clears throat> She's going to put her ties um, underneath her towel. That's going to help hold them in place. She's a little close to that wall over there, but just because we have mm -hmm. limited room in here, you'd have more room. So she wants to be sure she doesn't get close to that wall. She's tucking in her her uh, hand cover, but leaving her ties sticking out, tucking in her towels. We want a nice tight surface there, guys. Because if your instruments um, get caught in the towel, then you'll pull the whole shebang, and they'll pull the whole shebang off when they pick up an instrument if you're not helping them do that. So um, make sure your towels are nice and snug, and we'll, we'll work on that with you. And our, our uh, 
Yep, then we can bring our mayo stand right over to our project. She can take her stringer off now because she's ready to get into those instruments. <coughs> Ms. Eason is going to do the very first thing that she needs to do, which is put a blade on a handle. You can go ahead and you can go ahead and start off. He can go ahead and start operating if he has a blade on a handle. But if I skip that step and I get that whole thing set up, it does him no good because he can't get into this abdomen or into this bone or whatever it takes. Okay, so. Um, I don't She's have my glasses it. on. I'm good at all that. So the very first thing that goes on your mayo stand is um, your blades. Okay. Um, notice how she had to get her string, her instruments off the stringer in order to get to a needle holder, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what you're going to put your blade on your handle with. Next thing she's going to do is um, organize her seal. Um, if she brings it snug over to her, she doesn't have to. Um, first of all, it kind of tightens up her field. She doesn't have to worry about somebody walking in between her two two fields. She's going to roll a towel to make a um, kind of like a a uh, lump over there for her instruments to kind of lean against. That way, it makes it easier for you to pick them up if they're kind of elevated on one end, and it also makes it easier for you to see um, where they are. Notice that she starts with the way her instruments are on the stringer. She's going to pick up um, four or six, always by twos, the instruments that we put up, to hemostats, to Babcocks, to Alice's. Um, all the things that were, are commonly used go on the back side of the mayo stand. So um, the cokers have teeth on them. And we want to be careful that we that he's not going to reach up and grab those, um, so we put those separately. And then our right angle and um, tonsil stats kind of bring up the end there. She added a hypo, and circulator will add that to the count. Any time in the course of the procedure from now on that you add things, you'll have to count them. Now she picks up all three of her scissors are going to go up there. You guys have a list of the things that go on your mayo stand, so it's no different than what your list is. Notice how she kind of snugs them in, um, handle, uh, ring, ring uh, loops one way, tip one way, that sort of thing. You'll see when we get done here. Miss Morgan, two, I don't two, think I counted my two rights. Two pair of pickups right. up. If we have the two, if we have matching pickups, we'll put two up. If not, we'll um, just pick two that are the same length. And then whatever retractor she's going to put up, she's going to make sure that they match as well, two matching retractors. She then folds a half, a half a towel. And Need she's ready, light handles, please, madam. ready to put the things on top of the towel, which are what you're going to use to get this case started. Your bobie, your light handles, a couple laps, uh, your suction with a towel clip, things like that. All those have to be... Um, right there ready. If you don't, um, when the case, when the surgeon um, comes in, gets down and gloved, you help him drape this 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 uh, patient so that that be is now a whole of uh, surgical or sterile uh, area, then you're going to pull this mayo stand up. And when you do that, you want to be up ready to unload onto the field the things that he needs to get this case started. So we have our, um, our safe zone, two laps, a pair of light handles, a suction and suction tip, and go ahead and connect those. You know, he, he, he's gonna, you can't use them unless they're connected, so go ahead and save yourself that step. We also need a towel clip because we need some way to hold that bovie and that um, suction onto the field, and we're going to use a towel clip every time, so go ahead and bring that up and get that ready. And, and that should be an atraumatic towel clip, guys, so that we don't make a hole in that drape when we put it up there. So as she works along, she's taking care of her trash. Sometimes we have a trash bag that attaches to the front, sometimes not. Is this sterile if she picks this up and puts trash underneath it? Yes. Sure it is. If I want something that I put under there later for protection, can I go get it? Sure I can. This is mine. This is my world. Everything blue is mine. Don't touch it. Okay, these are my things, and I can do whatever I want to um, in, in this workspace here. 
She's folding her towels now to get ready to get her drapes and linens in order. She's folded three towards her. The flap on the top is fold to folded towards her. And the last one is folded away from her. This enables us to hand these to the surgeon in the way that he's going to use them. We want a nice smooth surface going down so that the, the uh, instruments don't get caught. We're going to stack these in the order that we're going to use them. The last thing is going to be on the bottom. So the last thing I'm going to do is, I'll get you some. Okay. Is cover Service this, gloves, please. Is cover this whole table with this big drape, okay? And then um, up from there I have towels and a, a thing called an Ioban. It's a um, betadine impregnated um, contact paper, kind of. It helps to keep the, the cooties from running around on the skin while you went, after you've made an incision. So, um, on top of that then goes his gown, um, his, I'm excuse me, his gloves, his gown, and a towel. So that's what your stack of linens every time should look like. How many things? Ga uh, his gloves, a towel, a gown, four towels, an IO band, and a, a large drape, a body drape. So there should be six things in that stack every time in that order. Got it? Comprendo? Okay. Now Ms. Easton's going to use her time, if her surgeon hasn't showed up, to neat see up her table. Um, she realized as she was working she didn't have a pair of gloves, so the circulator just opens a pair of gloves. It's not like it's a mistake. It's not like who screwed this up. It's just kind of like, oh, I need some more gloves. So somebody brings up some gloves. Um, we work together as a team like that. She makes sure her instruments are organized, neat and tidy. Um, her sutures are all av easily available. She has some extra stuff here that she doesn't really care about, So, but she may need some water in that basin. So she's going to dump all those things out. She's got her um, irrigation bucket sitting there ready to receive some um, saline on her field. And she's just tidying up. Everything should be neat and tidy and stay that way in the course of the procedure. She has a specimen container. Um, sometimes we'll use this as a dual purpose. We'll kind of recycle it on the field. Initially, we may put some local in it because the circulator has to pour the local into a container. We can't just suck it out. Um, and then, after we've drawn that up in our syringe and used it all, we will use it as a specimen container later on. We'll actually put a label on it with our, the name of the specimen. We have to label it with whatever medication's in it. Um, but afterwards, we can dump that out, or if we don't use it, um, use it for the specimen container. So the big one there is what they'll pour the local in, okay? And then, Anytime we have any medication on the field, guys, it has to be labeled. That's not a suggestion. That's one of the Ten Commandments, okay? Um, OSHA requires that because of um, medication errors, so it's um, imperative that we have those things. Mm, she went ahead and put her hypo on her syringe. That way it was handy if, when she's ready to use it. It's not labeled, however, because she doesn't have medication in it. We can't pre-label things. If she has saline, it has to say saline on a label. Some of these um, items that come from companies have, you can actually, there's like a little rough spot and you can mark on them with a marking pen so you can write NACL on the bucket itself. Um, the same thing as the lap basin. If you put water in there, it has to be labeled as water, H2O. You can make, you can make short notes. Um, notice Miss Easton stays in her box. Now she's just on the, playing the waiting game. This patient has come into the room. She's ready. She's ready to rock and roll, but there's nothing to be nothing else for her to do because she's sterile. So circulator is getting this patient or, um, uh, comfortable in the bed, making sure they have a safety strap on. Anesthesia is putting this patient to sleep. After that, there may be a bit more positioning required. Um, circulator is then are going to go ahead and do a prep. Oftentimes, you'll have the prep solution that comes in this setup pack. You just and it comes in that package just like that. We'll just toss it off on the bed. And the circulator will use that product to then um, prep this patient. Then, surgeon's gonna come in. Ms. Eason's gonna, uh, the scrub is gonna gown and glove the surgeon and help the surgeon um, put their drapes on the body, cover up the whole body. And after that biggest drape is on, then you're gonna push your mayo stand up, okay? Not until that drape goes on 
do you bring up your, if that sterile drape goes on, do you bring up your sterile mayo? mayo. So think, think to yourself, is all of this sterile? Am I ready to, to go up to the field? Okay. At that point, there's a lot of, come on, come on, come on. Don't let them hurry you. Just take your time and be safe. You don't want to knock your stuff off of there because you're, you're in a hurry at this point. So we bring up our mayo stand. We bring up our back table right to the end of the bed. We, we position our basin the way we want it to be, and we are ready to rock and roll. Ms. Eason's kind of tired now. She's been standing here for a while. She has no option other than, you know, if she needs to go potty, she could break out and come back and scrub and get a new gown and gloves. But she has to stand with her hands um, in her box. She has to stay in her box the whole time. She can rest with them on the mayo or on the back table, um, but there's no leaning or sitting or any of that sort of thing at this point. Questions, guys? That's the whole shebang. Just learn this and you've got a good paying job for the rest of your life. <laughs> Of course, there are variations with this, but this is the basic everyday hernia repair, circumcision. This is this is a basic case right here. What do I leave out, Miss Eason? I think you can bring some questions over anything. Um, if you like, you're already spent like all your stuff on, and then you're getting the instruments, and then you find out about like, one of them's still dirty, like sterilization didn't get that one. What do you do? Because it's already contained. Get rid of the you whole get thing. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And if there's an incorrect count, also. Incorrect count. Do we get like, rid of like if there's. Oh, like if I had seven hemostats instead of eight. No, we'll just make a notation on on the count sheet that we only have seven instead of eight. So it goes back when they do the, look at everything. They're like, she's missing a hemostat. No, she's not. They marked on the sheet that it's seven. And usually there's communication between the scrub when she goes in and says, there are only seven hemostats instead of eight in this tray. We marked it on the sheet. But if there's nine retake, then you throw it out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The difference between the instruments and the sponges. Right. But like when you guys were learning instruments, <laughs> when you guys were checking them off, you were being the RS side of it. Mm -hmm. If there wasn't something there, you would note it on the couch sheet. And there are places with stickers on the outside of the casket that say this is missing, blah, blah, blah. So we know before we even open it usually that it's going to be missing something. And if we absolutely have it, we'll pull one from a peel pack. That's a prime example why you would have a peel pack item on a shelf. Um, aren't you supposed to have your clip appliers on the clip a base on your mail? Oh, I didn't put my clip appliers on. Clip appliers. Mm -hmm. If I had a base, I'd put it right down here because it's accountable. So notice Get that Miss Eason's um, needle board is the closest to where she's going to be using it. I mean, if she's using a lot of needles, she doesn't want to extend her axilla over that mayo stand mm -hmm. every time to stick them in that needle board, okay? It's going to be closest to the project. Also notice that the items that are going to come to the field, to the, uh, to the, uh, off of the mayo are the, are the most commonly used items are going to be on the side of the mayo closest to the incision. So when she pulls this mayo stand up, she's going to come from this direction and tuck it in going this way with her knife, scissors, and pickups, the most commonly used items on that side, okay? Um, uh, natural instinct would tell you to just come here, this is the quickest, quickest, push it in right here, but you're going to be backwards. And all of your instruments that you don't want him to have, that you want him to ask for and keep neat and tidy, would be close to the wound. You need to bring that, turn that mayo stand around and bring it in in this direction. So you're going to be here. Um, if he's standing here, you're going to stand here with your mayo um, on that side, you're going to bring that back table right up to here, just like it sits right there, so you have easy access to those supplies that are there. Make it easy for yourself, guys. Don't make it difficult, okay? So yeah. what you just said, I'm sorry. So if you know, you need to know what side of the bed you're standing on in order to lay your mayo. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. For, okay. um, say if you're doing a, a right-sided um, hernia repair, he's going to stand on this patient's right side. Most surgeons are right-handed. So, you know, they want to work this way. They don't want to work backwards to themselves. So he's going to stand here. I know that I'm going to stand there. I want my knives, scissors, et cetera, pickups to be closest to the working site. So it's going to be in this angle right here. Okay. Now, if he had an assistant, surgeon assistant, you're still going to stand there. Surgeon you, you're still going to stand here. 
you're not going to have very good access to your back table right there, so you're going to bring it up right to your to the side right here, so you can reach things more easily. Comprendo? You get a better picture of that as time goes by. <clears throat> so the number one thing, guys, is don't lose sight of your field. Okay? Um, don't turn your back on your field. To get through this, these checkoffs, you have to remember, as Ms. Morgan has saw, you demonstrated, you have to walk to the side to drop things in the bucket. You have to see where your hand is the whole time. You can't just come over here and go like this. Okay? Is your hand out of your view? Of course it is. So maybe that wrapper was sticking up there and you reached over and just did this. Your hand brushed that wrapper and now your hand's contaminated, but you don't know it because you didn't watch your hand. Ms. Easton stays the whole time, just like this. And it's really, seems retarded, but that's really what we do. You can't get out of your box. So draw yourself a little mental image there. I'm sorry, but we'll rag on you about that a lot, because it's a hard thing to kind of get set in your mind at first. Questions? Comments? I see a lot of scared faces. <laughs> We'll probably do it one more time uh, for you guys again before between now and you know, we'll do it a couple more times. On I'm um, I'm sterile now. On Thursday and Friday we will be doing aspects aspects of um, the back table. Um, what I decided this year is we're gonna cut them into chunks instead of watch you do the whole part. We're just going to watch you put all the stuff out, put all your equipment and supplies in the correct place. Open your back table. Then the next time we're going to do um, from opening up your back table to uh, bringing your sterile supplies onto your field. So I'll break up the big back table into small chunks, and then that way you can put it together rather than expecting you to do it from start to finish um, for your return demo. So then that way, if you do it one time, we take it down, your, your, the person in your group gets up and does it again, it's sticking in your mind at least three or four times, the order. Then we'll move to the next step and then we'll do something else. And if you watch your team member do that three or four times, you should know how to do that and then we put it all together. So 